Here we are in week three of our four-week series where we have asked the question, why? And the why is Jesus loved us. We've asked the what. What do we need to do? What do we need to show up? And tonight we're going to address the subject of how. How do we show up in the lives of others? Well, when I think of the story of Jesus, I am impressed by the fact that he left a perfect heaven to come be with us in this sinful world. He came to dwell among us. And what's interesting is that ultimately, what did he do? He came to relate to us. He came to ask us questions. He came to listen. And you know what he did well? He listened well. He often asked the question, what do you want me to do for you? And usually his response was, it is granted. Well, I want you to think about, is that skill something that's needed in our day? Do we need the skill of listening? And what's the difference between simply hearing someone speak and truly listening? Well, recently I went to a bank to do a transaction. Now, I had a bank a half a mile away, but I chose to drive to a bank five miles away. And when I got there, I was looking for a specific person, someone that I've already invested in. And once again, here she came and she greeted me. Now, she asked me, what's your name again? So we're not like best buds, but she knows me well enough to know that I care about her. So I went in and sat down at, at her desk and said, here's what I need done today. And in the midst of that conversation, it led to me once again observing her room, seeing the pictures of her daughters, the pictures of the horses, and I asked questions. I listened. And it led to me asking, would you mind if I give you some advice? Well, I chose the more expensive and the harder plan so that I could engage and experience a God moment, a God only moment. And you know, at the end of the time that we were together, she was encouraged. Well, what, is, what does that mean to us tonight? I'm asking you the question, who can you intentionally pour into? Well, in Acts 8.26, we see a story which says, And now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in the charge of the treasury. Well, this man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Well, the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Well, then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. So he approached him and said, do you understand what you're reading? Well, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Wow, what a story where Philip showed up. Just as Jesus showed up on earth, <laughs> Philip showed up for this eunuch. And the man ended up receiving Christ and was baptized. What does that suggest? When we're willing to show up, things happen. How do we show up? Well, we show up and be genuine. We show up and be caring and compassionate. We show up by asking questions. We show up by listening. And we show up by relating. You see, Philip embraced the Ethiopian where he was. That makes me think of a statement that Martin Luther said many, many years ago. Now I stand. And he ended up writing 95 stances that he was wanting the people to agree with. But today, I would suggest we need to switch. Those now I stand statements has led us down the road, not directly through Luther, but to a selfie world where maybe it's time that we choose to say, there we go. There we go. You see, we want to show up, not shell up. We don't want to be all about ourselves. But just as I learned about my banker's life story, it brought me to a place where I could care and pray and now go back and check in. But the question is, how do we show up? How do we show up? Well, there's ABCs. A, we want to be available and acknowledge, God, I make myself available to you. B, well, I believe God wants to use me and even that he has gifted me to do so. And C, I'm ready to connect. I see myself as a connector. Just as last week, we looked at 
hey, I'm a part of the royal priesthood. My job, my responsibility, my privilege is to connect with God and connect with others. So tonight, let's start with this discussion. What do we mean by the phrase, hey, they didn't show up even though the team was on the field or the person was at the party? Go after it. Have a great conversation. And at the end of the night, your homework assignment is going to be create an elevator speech, a 30 seconds to one minute response that you can share with someone regarding your testimony and what Christ means to you. Have a great conversation and God bless. There is a river of gladness that pours from a man who has veins. The sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved.